Hi everyone. It's good to be with you again. I hope that you had a good week and that you have given some thought to what we talked about last week, which was how to stay safe during this time in which we are living with a uh, virus uh, that has created a pandemic for the whole world. So we talked about how the Bible can help to make us feel safe. And I ask if some of you would be willing to send me some ideas about how you felt that maybe the Bible could help you feel safe, and several of you did that. So I wanted to share those with you. Uh, the Bible can help you get out of dark times or hard times, and we certainly feel that we're in hard times right now. The Bible gives us examples of other people who went through hard times in the past and how they relied on God. And so that can be helpful to us now. The Bible conveys words of God and his people. Reading the Bible can make you feel calm. And the last comment is, I don't like any more homework, which is a good thing because it makes me realize that, in fact, someone's doing their homework out there. So that's a good thing. Today, I want to talk about ideas about how we share. How do we share our thoughts, our concerns, our questions? How do we tell somebody what we want them to know? Now, of course, we are big on our cell phones and using the internet and computers and tablets and some of us maybe even still draw pictures or write letters and send it through snail mail to other people. But today I want to talk about how to discuss ideas over dinner while we're eating. If you think about it, a lot of the messages that were given to people from God or that Jesus talked about were often over a meal. So I came up with a couple of questions. What is important about meal time and food and sharing? And what's so important about messages from God and Jesus? So that led me to think about what is food? If you look at Wikipedia, Wikipedia says that food is any substance that is eaten for nutritional purposes. And so the people that the Bible was talking about were sitting around and eating for the nutritional support for their bones and their muscles and strength and things like that. But I don't think that the messages from Jesus and messages to the people from God were really about the food itself. I think it's much more than that. I think it's messages for our mind and our souls so that we can be better people. I'm going to show you a series of pictures now with stories. I think that you probably know a lot of these stories, uh, but we're going to take a little bit different slant on how to think about them this time. So we're going to be looking at the food, but the message behind the situation. So let's take a look at the first one. So this, of course, is the story of Adam and Eve. And as we know, God had asked Adam and Eve not to eat the fruit from a particular tree in the garden. But they decided that they were going to do it anyway. And from that decision, many difficult and unfortunate things happened to them. So God knows what is best for us. And I think the message to us is that we need to pay attention to that. 
and not think that we know better than God. The next one is a story from the Old Testament in which the Israelites, the people from Israel, were in the desert for 40 years. That's a long time, much older than many of you are who are listening to this Sunday school lesson. And as they were in the desert for all those years, God sent them manna, M-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. It actually means, what is it? It was a substance that fell from the sky and tasted somewhat like honey. And they ate this every day and eventually God also sent quail. But it was very interesting about this manna in that if you gathered it all up and you tried to save it for the next day, it didn't work. It deteriorated. And so the people realized that every day God would give them what they needed for that day. And that's a good message for us, that we need to rely on God every day. So we also know the story about Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And Zacchaeus was not liked by people that he was responsible for to gather taxes to get to Rome because he cheated. He made them pay much more than what they really should have. And so he was an outcast. And Jesus asked if he could go to his home and have a meal with him. And from that meeting, Zacchaeus became a changed person. He stopped cheating people. In fact, he gave money back to them. And this, the message that we get from this is that nobody is so good that they don't need grace. And nobody is so bad that they don't deserve it. And it all came about because of an interaction with Jesus who befriended him and transformed his life. This story is about two sisters, Mary and Martha. There's been a lot of discussion around this story. The story goes that Jesus came to visit them and Mary sat attentively at Jesus' feet listening to every word while Martha was in the kitchen preparing food for Jesus and people who had accompanied him to their home. After a while, Martha was a bit disgruntled over the fact that her sister wasn't helping her prepare the food. And so you see in this picture that Martha is sort of standing in the door of the kitchen saying, you know, hey, come on, I could use some help here. And Jesus, recognizing both the importance of getting something prepared but also listening to him had to reach out to each sister differently. And I think the message for us is that there is a right time for everything. And sometimes we just need to stop and listen. I bet you know this one. We've talked about this an awful lot. So I'm gonna to try to get this as close as I can for you to see. It's kind of hard for me to work this machine sometimes. Um, but the story behind this is that in the hands of Jesus, anything is possible. And of course, this is the story of feeding 5,000 people 
with two, two fish and five barley loaves. We, re, we know that that was certainly not enough food to feed probably one or two people, much less 5,000. So the message to us here is that in the hands of Jesus, anything is possible. And the last picture that I have for you is a picture that um, shows Jesus sitting at the shore with his disciples. Now, this is a time when Jesus had, this was after the resurrection, and this is the third time that he's meeting with them. And he asks them to bring fish that they have caught over to share. In the meantime, he's already started preparing fish and has a fire going. And so the message to us here is that Jesus invites us to bring what we have to him in the way of our talents, our skills, our personalities, and that in his hands, who we are, become a real blessing for others. So I hope that those have given you some information to think about this coming week. And as I promised from last week, I have a recipe for you. It's uh, with chocolate, with, um, I was thinking of chocolate chip earlier today, with peanut butter cookies. Uh, the ingredients uh, is just have three things peanut butter, a cup of sugar, and an egg. And um, so work with your parents, if you would like, on trying to make these cookies. And the point of me giving you this recipe is not that you can't find a recipe on your own, but it's a suggestion about the use of these cookies to have some meaningful conversation with your family this week. Take some time to stop to concentrate on what other people have to say and to benefit from the communication that occurs when we do take time to really listen and enjoy each other. So for now, I'll say goodbye. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you again next week. Take care.